Say you've got mechanical ulnar sided wrist pain. What does that mean? You've got pain on the ulnar side of your wrist. It hurts when you supinate and pronate. You may have a click of pain. You drop objects when you're holding things tight. And it turns out that you've got distal radial ulnar joint instability. The problem with distal radial ulnar joint instability is there are other symptoms that can mimic it and it's frequently missed because people are not aware of the problem. So, what do you find with people that have this, this condition? Well, they've had a fall, they've landed on their wrist, or it's developed gradually after multiple falls. If you look at the wrist and examine the wrist, the first thing is if you hold the radius tight and move the ulna, you'll get a little bit of movement. Now, the movement's very slight, but it feels an awful lot. It feels very big when you compare it to the other side when there's no movement. The second thing is if you supinate the forearm like this and you push on the ulna, people will literally just jump off their chair to stay away from the pressure. I call that a wind-up test. So if that's what you've got and there's no other problem on the ulna side of the wrist that you can pick, there's a really good chance that you've got distal radial ulnar joint instability. Now that's important because you have the distal radial ulnar joint, you have the proximal radial ulnar joint, and the radius links around the ulna, so you have two joints here, above and below, and it's the balance for the wrist. So you've got distal radial ulnar joint instability. Where do you go from there? Well, you need some tests to confirm it. Uh, unless you've broken your bones and in the wrong place, an X-ray and a CT scan rarely give you any information that helps. They give you lots of negative information, but rarely give you information that helps. An MRI scan is the way to look at the soft tissues because in nearly all cases where you have painful distal radial ulnar joint, you've torn a ligament called the triangular fibre cartilage, which joins the radius to the ulna, and it has a simple point of contact, and the whole radius spins around that one little ligament of the triangular fibre cartilage that inserts on the ulna. So, if you do the MRI, you can see the triangular fibre cartilage. The problem is that while everybody says it's a good test for the condition, it simply isn't. If you've got a gross, complete tear, you can see it. If it's intact, you can see it. But in between, there's a grey area where you don't quite know whether it's partially damaged, it's stretched and it's incompetent, or it's intact. So how do you solve that problem? You need more information. Well, something that's been very new that I've been very happy to be involved in, in developing is looking at the distal radial ulnar joint with a 1.9 arthroscope, a 1.9 millimeter arthroscope. And believe it or not, you know, we're very, very good at arthroscopy in the wrist, putting a small arthroscope in the wrist and looking around the wrist. It's been very hard to reliably look inside the distal radial ulnar joint. Now, with the advent of new techniques and instruments, I can place a 1.9 millimeter diameter arthroscope inside the distal radial ulnar joint see the bottom of the triangular fibre cartilage, see the insertion of the, carpal, the, triangular, the triangular fibre cartilage, and the way that the whole ligament is inserted, whether or not it's loose or whether it's stable and sound. So what does that mean? It means that I can see where it's torn so that if we need to operate to fix it, we can design our operations to fix the problem in the wrist rather than doing a blanket overall weave or something that hopes it's going to capture the problem. So using these techniques, I can clean it out, put a small anchor into the bone here through a tiny little cut on the ulnar side of the wrist, looking through the wrist with a 1.9 arthroscope, 1.9 millimeter diameter arthroscope, and stitch it back onto where it's come off. And furthermore, because you can see the problem, you know whether it's reparable. If there's not enough tissue there, you know that an arthroscopic repair by itself would not work. If there's not enough tissue there, then I can take a spare tendon from the front of your wrist, 10 to 12% of people haven't got it, and use that arthroscopically through the same cuts to, a more, to do a more complex repair, passing the tendon through the triangular fibre cartilage and through a tunnel in the side of the wrist. And that's why the results are so good. We can identify, I can, I can identify the problem, I can fix the problem, I can know which ones are not going to be fixed with a simple arthroscopic repair, and I know which ones I need to do a more complex repair on. 
So what happens to you after this operation? Well, the operation is quite minor. It can be done under a local anaesthetic. It can be done under a general anaesthetic. You go home the same day. You see the therapist and they put a special splint on your arm that holds your arm like this. It stops it pronating and supinating. You can use your fingers and you stay in that for three weeks. From week four to week six, you go into another splint which leaves your elbow free. We simply shorten the first splint so you can move your elbow and you start to pronate and supinate. At six weeks, it should be healed. And then we start a comprehensive hand wrist proprioceptive exercise program to get the strength, power, coordination back into your wrist and regain your full supination and pronation. Now using these techniques, we've turned a, a, a complex problem that was frequently missed into an easily diagnosable problem. We've defined the problems, we can actually see them. We can design the operation for the injury and we can get a reliably good predictable result.